Hey guys, it's Vince over at CG Vinyl Studio and today we are going to be looking at doing a tutorial quickly using Vinyl Master Expert 4.2 and again I'm using Vinyl Master software any version of Vinyl Master software you have this will work with uh, typically the big thing here is that you understand the premise of why I'm doing this and of course I've got this question that was asked to me and that is how do I work with files um, I'm learning the software and how do I work with files and manipulate certain colors in the file to remove background without actually uh, removing any of the colors in the, the actual picture that I want to remain there without having to re-edit them. This happens typically when we associate certain colors in the background with what's in our image. And I'm going to show you this briefly what's going on because Final Master does have pretty good tutorial videos. I have to say they did a really good job doing them, but they're completely arbitrary. And the unfortunate side to that is the new people that are learning Vinyl Master, they don't have the feel yet of necessarily how to use certain features and I feel that a couple videos done on these type of format will definitely eliminate any confusion. So you can see here we've got an American flag and this image is typically used on the vertical fin of uh, an actual aircraft. And you can see the image itself looks decent. I mean it's, it's relatively clear. The color format's a little off. Uh, we do have a slight shaded area. Of course got a lot of dark shadows. But overall the image is workable. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up and I want to export this file so we can manipulate it and correct some things. So again, I'm just going arbitrarily to my desktop and I'm just going to label it flag. Now once I do that, I'm going to get this actual general options and this is for exporting the image. And you can see here the resolution DPI, you got your proportional formatting as far as final output for your pixels. Uh, the only area to really pay uh, concern to is going to be your background and also your padding. And first we're going, to, we're going to focus on the background. If you notice a color used in the background that's also in your image, you're going to want to change the color of the background. And the main reason that is, is that once you go to mask the image and potentially uh, erase the background, if the color is already present in one of your actual images uh, that you want to actually stay there and be present, it's going to most likely manipulate that color as well and therefore you'll have to go back in and refill it. So the easiest way to do this is just select your background and I would go with a color completely contradictory to what's being used. So I'm going with a bright yellow and once I do that you can see the flag is present. Not only is the flag present but it gives you a much better outlook of your image in terms of what's going on around it. And what I mean to say is if you were to remove this background, if anything was still present in terms of any areas you want to remove or edit, you would easily see that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to padding. And what padding basically does is if we look here on both the width and the height of the image, you can see we're basically in a very close proximity to the top and bottom edge of the graphic as well as the left and right side. What we're going to do is click on padding and we're going to add an additional 100 pixels, which I recommend because that's about the, the safest spot. And went right there, I clicked off of it, my fault. And now what we're going to do is once by doing that, you can see what actually happened here. We now have a slight space between the top and the bottom of the image as well as the left and right side. And what that's going to do is give us some nice space that when we go to remove the background, everything is nice and clean. So now I'm just going to click OK because everything here looks good. And the main reason I'm going to click OK is because the size on the disk of this image is 25 megs. I usually don't go too much past that. I might go up to 50 depending upon the size of the image I have to produce for the client. But overall, this is a really nice pixel count bitmap image at 2923 by 2291. I'm going to click OK and that's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I want to edit this. And I highly recommend if you guys are not familiar with editing software and it's cloud-based, it's free, uh, again, using the quick and easy format, which for most of you is probably going to give you enough features that you'll at least get your business started for free um, as far as editing. Uh, it usually does not require you to sign up unless you choose to. But what we're going to do here is just go over the quick and easy. And I'm just going to click on open image. And once again, you can see our image is right here. And then you have the option, uh, pre-resize image, the image you selected is very large, 2923 by 2291. Resize it before you start to edit to save on memory and minimize lag. Well, I have a pretty decent system, so I'm really not going to want to 
actually manipulate those pixels. You may not as well. You can choose original, full HD, and this is where your pixels will be. You can also edit your pixel count, which I'm going to do right here. 29, 23, I want it to stay the same. And you'll see proportionally it will change and stay the same. It'll be 29, 23 by 2291. I'll click on apply. Everything is set. I'm now going to come in here and now I can play with my vibrance. I'm just going to add a little vibrant, probably go up maybe 20 or 30 for this particular image. And I always highly recommend manipulating your images for vibrancy slightly higher because what you see on your screen, I don't care how well it's calibrated, is never going to be printed exact. And anyone that tells you that, I, I really would question it. Um, doing this as long as I've done it, uh, again, year after year, you always see variations in different type of printers. Uh, my new P7000, the one thing I've, I've realized is that the color spectrum is dead on, but you still are not going to get that backlit imaging that you get just from your monitor. So just pay close attention to that. With saturation, we'll do the same thing. And again, this is a graphic, so you really want it to pop. You can see once I went up to 20, you can see the difference in the image already. Temperature, I always increase on this particular image. I'll probably go up maybe 5 to 10. We'll just see where we're at. And you can see it really, really does make a difference. I think I'll drop that a little bit. I'll just come down to 5. And now I'll come over to light. Uh, exposure, I'm not going to play with. I'm just going to go with a little bit of contrast. That's it. About right, and now I'm going to go with the white because you can see the white here is just slightly off. We'll go with a excuse me. We'll go over here to the white, and we will go right about 10. That looks nice. Now what we'll do is we can see here now the shadowing effect, and you get certain clients that will want shadowing, and certain clients don't. In this particular image, you do want some shadowing because naturally it's where the flag is actually waving <clears throat> to create that effect. So again, if we manipulate this, and the best thing to do is if you have questions, just reduce your slider on both aspects, maximum, and then you can really see what you're playing with, okay? Especially if you're novice, don't be so focused on manipulating, you know, the slider. Just be focused on where you're at in terms of what you're trying to accomplish because that's the big thing here. Okay, come over here. We'll just go with a slight adjustment. I think five is pretty good right there. Okay, now everything is looking good. You can see on the mouse cursor, uh, excuse me, the mouse wheel, if you roll up forward, naturally you're going to zoom in. If you roll back, you'll zoom out. Details. This is one of the best features of this software. You can sharpen the image very, very subtly, which I love to do. Very subtle. Give me a little bit of clarity. And you can see you've basically got a life-size image now. Now naturally, if this is printed at a much uh, lower size format, you're going to have an even higher pixel count, at least what the naked eye sees. So it'll really make this image pop. You can see where we're at. Click on apply. Done. Now we'll save it. And I'm going to save it. It allows you to choose the format you'd like to save. You can do uh, low, medium, or high in the quality. You can select. I'm going to go all the way up. And I'm going to select PNG because that'll give me some of the best quality. It's telling your size here. It's telling your pixels. Once again, nothing has changed. I'm going to save it. And I will save it to my desktop. We should be set. Let's see. Good. Once we make sure you get your ad banner, you know you're pretty much good. We'll close out. And now what we want to do, you can see the old image. And now what we want to do is come back in, import the image. And you can see we got the PNG format. And then we have the JPEG. And you can still see a vast difference between the two. We're going to delete the file we created to actually uh, produce this image in the revised version. Double click on the PNG and you can see how big it is. Okay. So this image right here is 8.5. This image right now is 30 inches. You can see that right here. We're going to go into our mass tools. I'm going to blow it up. And once again, I'll show you how fast this is. We're going to come over here to a background eraser. And we just click on it. And magic and that nothing was manipulated once again internally in the flag. Then I'm going to come over here to my background and the reason we want to change our background is on your eyes, at least my eyes, it makes it more difficult to see what's going on in the background when we're doing uh, just a general background removal where we have the checkerboard pattern with the gray and white boxes. So once again select an arbitrary color. You could do a bright green, you could do a bright yellow. I like the bright yellow. Just click on that. You can see there's nothing in the background. Everything here looks good. Uh, we're going to once again just tap on smooth once. 
I'll tap on sharpen once and I'll trace it. And then of course you're tracing naturally if you're familiar with Vinyl Master at least looking at the videos that are present. As far as tutorials, you can smooth out your image, you can adjust your corners. In this particular case, we're really not going to mess with anything because this flag is supposed to generate an image that's in motion. I'm going to leave it a little rough. Go with Trace. Let her vectorize it. And you'll see the perimeter added around the image. And this may go faster or slower depending on your system. Once that's done, you can see here you've got that black image. And now we click on accept and we click on accept again and there's your new image and once again now you're you're left with uh, a format of the image that is much clearer from this to this and we're going to go back down to its original size which is eight and a half we'll just shrink it get them both the same and then you guys can check them out Now what we'll do is just come in and you can see the color difference. It's just dramatic. And once again, when you print, you're never going to have 100% accuracy as far as, you know, where your printer, regardless of the quality of the printer and regardless of the OEM inks. But I will say this, so far, at least from what I have seen um, with the Epson P7000, the color matching is probably the closest I've ever seen. And you can see now what you're left with. And once again, we edited the picture to give us um, more clarity and to give us a slight color option and the boost and vibrancy. Shadowing is still present, but we don't have that dark haze that was really uh, present in the previous one. And best of all, we did it in a streamlined format in a very quick workflow that did not affect us having to manipulate any colors inside the image, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So again, guys, if you have any questions on Vinyl Master, I'll do my best to, hand, to uh, answer them. Uh, Vinyl Master, once again, is the software of choice that I've been using. I really love the software. I have to say the support has been hit and miss. Um, I wish it was a little better myself. I think that uh, they could be doing a better job. Other than that, uh, the software is very powerful if you understand all of the feature sets and like I said they do produce a lot of videos for tutorials but again there are a lot of hidden features that many of you may or may not know especially as you learn the software so again I hope that this video has been helpful um, if you have any questions require quotes uh, you'll see the link in the at the end of the video here for uh, Joanna's email you can contact her directly she'll get with me and uh, we can we'll do our best to try to uh, naturally go over in, in video format whatever questions you have because I feel that um, there are going to be a lot of questions with this regardless of what substrate you use and you'll also be able to adjust again just one uh, brief thing to point out naturally your color adjustments are going to be based on what substrate you're using too um, we get a lot of clients that will say you know my color format on one substrate is not exactly the same and that's always going to be the case and that's where you know purchasing a uh, one of the color calibration systems that are out on the market they usually go for between three to six hundred dollars uh, we had a color monkey there's a whole bunch of different ones that are on the market they are real beneficial because what it allow you to do is print on your substrate with your printer and it calibrates the color palette to your actual printer's output, which physically scans the colors of the printer's output so that naturally your computer will give you uh, a more accurate depiction of the color format that's going to be produced. Far better than any ICC profile. We get that question a lot where people think that their ICC profile really means a lot. Some of them are okay. Most of them are not 100% accurate. So just keep that in mind. Once again, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.